Hello everybody, my name is Shortline614 and welcome to the second episode of Shortline Space Program. In this episode, we are launching the last trust segment of the Columbia Space Station. And eh, this didn't go as well as I wanted. Turns out that if I don't play this game for a few days, I tend to start to forget how to do things. Uh which you this will become very apparent in the moment. Uh this is this of course is pretty much identical to the truss that we launched in the last episode except for a a very special addition. If you notice uh in the last episode, uh I had trouble docking this thing because I didn't have enough SAS control. Well, this has some extra SAS control and uh if you see the little sepatrons at stage 0, you might get an idea of what I'm doing. So yeah, just standard orbit. I, uh, I managed to get a rendezvous within, like, just just three orbits, you know. Uh, I also forget to switch to free mode and actually deploy the fairing, and then you will actually get a, uh, you'll actually get a glimpse of what that is. So, as you can see, that is a SAS on a docking port and a little probe core, and once we dock, we will jettison this. And I think my initial idea... That does actually, it, it does actually help, but uh, unfortunately not as much as I thought it would. So, we just do a standard rendezvous, we catch up to the station, and uh, at this point, you know, I kill all of velocity, and then I think, hey, uh, because I have the, the big-brained SAS, uh, I, I just have to get in, you know, close enough, you know, get within a few kilometers, you know, not, not super, super close, and then I can... Of course, detach the, you know, within a kilometer, and I can detach the, uh, the stage, and then I can, because this has SAS control, I can come in and dock this, uh, by itself. Turns out, no. Spoiler alert, no. So, uh, I, I start to try to maneuver this thing in, and, uh, this, which, remember, this thing is 30 tons at liftoff, and, uh, the fuel in it, it's certainly less now. It's more like 20 tons, but this is a big payload. Uh, so, this was my first attempt at trying to come in, come into the station. And uh, as you can see, it didn't go well. Of course, uh, I, I come in at night, and at this point I'm thinking, oh god, I'm going to have to do a night docking. Uh, but I try to kill my velocity... Uh, not using translation controls, and then I'm like, you know, maybe I should use translation controls. Maybe that would help. Uh, turns out, no. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, 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 it works somewhat, but, uh, uh, not that well, actually. So, yeah, I keep, it keeps auto-saving, I keep quick-saving, and I, I, I get in relatively close. And then, I think there comes a point where I'm just like, Nah, this isn't working. And I just... I just reload. Yep, there we go. And I decide, you know, maybe I should get in a little bit closer with that... With that upper stage. Uh, so... I obviously point towards the station, you know, turn around. And I switch to the station, then I realize, hey, I actually have something that can help with this. It's called a space tug. Well, I guess it's not really so much of a tug, it's... I guess it's kind of a tug. It's a construction vehicle. So, that thing just bounces off the side of the station, and then I fly this thing up. I uh, still don't know what the pink thing, the pink square is all about. Yet again, if somebody can tell me. And, uh, then I try to dock this thing, and uh, I have trouble docking this as well, because I'm not good at docking craft that aren't, like, that are at an angle. So, I... I try to maneuver that. I try to come in. Oh, excuse me. Well, I get in close. And then I'm like, hey, do I really want to dock at an angle like this? And I'm like, eh, screw this. I'll just maneuver it. And then I switch back thinking that the uh, it'll do it automatically. And then I'm like, you know what? This is in the way. And I just I just yeet it out of the way. It ends up in like a 100 by like 75 kilometer orbit. And that, that becomes a bit of an issue later. But uh, we'll see. So this thing... Uh, I, I come in, and it's still a little bit of an angle, but... And I come in and dock, and now this has two SAS on it. 
and an extra set of RCS thrusters, and this thing is a lot more maneuverable. The RCS is actually somewhat off balance, but it actually didn't turn out to be much of a problem when I was trying to get in close. Uh, whatever I title this episode, it's gonna be... I think I'm gonna title it, like, Installing the Last Trust or something, but, uh... I don't know, or the last trust segment for the station. I, I don't know, something short. But, um... Uh, alternative title, uh, short line forgets he has a space tug, short line forgets that translation controls are, uh, just bad at docking large craft. On retrospect, I probably, one thing I probably should have done is put, uh, little engines on the, um, on the, uh, trust segments themselves. But, uh, I, I'm getting close now coming up from underneath the station, and at this point I'm feeling pretty confident, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna get this in. And I, I set the target, as you can see the tug is drifting away, it's now 30 kilometers. It's practically in a different, well, it is in a different orbit, it's gonna go far. And as I come around on the light side, I come around on the light side, uh, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna get a docking in the light, and of course, uh, my, my strategy for docking this is the same as docking the last truss, which is to slide this truss in between the station, and then at the last moment I disconnect the, the, um, the tug. That also causes a bit of trouble, because the tug also ends up flying away really far, because I don't pay attention to orbits, or the relative speed of each craft, because I'm like, eh, I don't need this for, like, the next ten minutes, five minutes, whatever. So, uh, so yeah, I can, I continue, I continue trying to, uh, get this in, and I start to use the translation controls, and, uh, and of course I slide past because this thing is a bit, I wouldn't want to say it's underpowered, I just, it, it's difficult to maneuver on orbit, let's just say that, and then I obviously maneuver the stations the right way. And then, because I can't see, I don't have, like, a docking, like, a mod that would help, like, a docking indicator. And the stock docking indicator kind of sucks. Uh, but, uh, so I keep drifting around, and I, I can't tell at which speed I'm actually drifting, which is kind of dumb. And then, I, uh, as you can see there, I go to undock the tug, and, uh, the module kind of flips over, and I undock the tug, and that just floats away, and I'm like, ah, oh, no big deal, I'll float away, like, a kilometer, and then I'll, you know, come back. And, uh, then, this starts to come in, I, uh, I orientate the, um, the two stations, and this thing, of course, drifts off course again, because... Oh god, oh fuck. I, I can't wait to dock the uh, the next part of the station, which is the large, the main uh, fuel tank. It's going to be 3.5 meters. That's going to be a pain. Uh, but it's all going to be worth it in the end, because we're going to have an epic... Uh, Columbia Station is going to be the the beginning point for all our explorations in space. Uh, and uh, then I pause the game because I get kind of frustrated, so I had to take a break. And then I resume, and then I start to come in, and there we go, I dock it, and then I check if it's aligned, and then that's excellent, and then the SAS, as you can see, I, I, uh, it, uh, goes in, uh, deorbits, and flies away from the station at great speed. So, at this point I realize, oh, god, I messed up with the, with the tug, it's really far away. And I'm, the one thing I'm always worried about this is power, because I'm like, oh god, what if it runs out of power? I really don't want to set up another one of these. Uh, I mean, not like that, it would be much of an issue. I, I will probably set up another tug, like a, a smaller tug at some point, but it would just be kind of a pain. Uh, so what ends up happening is I do manage to get a uh, pretty quick and easy rendezvous. This thing has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of TWR on orbit. Uh, the, the bad thing is, it's kind of... I did waste, like... Not really waste. I did spend uh, about 100, maybe 200 miles per pallet to actually get back to the station itself. But, uh... As you can see, I 
managed to get an encounter. There's the station. It's really big. It's only going to get bigger as time continues. Uh, and uh, I managed to uh, get it back in. Uh, really close. And then, of course, I use the translation controls to dock. And then we can go ahead and deploy the solar panels. And that is the end of our truss. Uh, I would put radiators on this thing. However, I don't expect to be adding anything that would use radiators. But, I don't know, maybe for the, I guess, lore. Lore. Uh, Roleplay purposes. But, that is the station. And then I go and deploy the remaining truss segments. And the... The, uh, the pistons are being weird, and that just, that's just what happens with them. They're not the best thing in the world, but eh, they do the job. And then I deploy the solar panels, and of course, uh, just to make sure that it's all in place, I, of course, uh, use the, the, uh, the auto-strutting. And then, of course, I do some station keeping, you know, readjusting some fuel around in the tanks, because I want I want the uh, center of mass on this thing to be pretty close to the center. And we are done with the truss segment, at least for now. I don't expect to be adding anything else. And this is our station. Columbia Station looks good. The next part is, of course, the fuel tank, and then the crew section, which I'm probably going to do that on stream. Anyways, uh, that's our nice cinematic view for now. And then I, of course, orient his station. And then I retract the solar panels and uh, communicatrons because that is the side where the massive, the main tank is going to be. And then I'm like, oh, right, I have this space tug. And my initial thought was, eh, I'll just deorbit this. But then I realized, eh, this, this is some fuel and I don't want it to go to waste. So what I do is, if, is I, of course, set it up on a encounter with Columbia Station and... Uh, it doesn't take a lot of Delta V, about 100 Delta V. You still have about 500. Yeah, right there. Uh, 500, 800. You still have a fair amount of fuel left in there that I can use in the station. Now, of course, eventually, uh, I'm gonna have some more long-term space tugs in orbit. But, uh, for now, for these assembly flights, uh, we just use them to refuel the, um, the, uh, uh, station tanks. And then I fly in. Uh, one thing that I, uh, now in retrospect, that I kind of forgot to do is adding RCS. A uh, good thing I haven't actually built the main, uh, fuel tank yet, uh, because I'd be able to add a bunch of RCS then. Uh, I don't know, what else would we need xenon gas? I don't think I'm gonna be setting up anything up with ion anytime, or, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be setting up any one of those anytime soon. Anyways, I come in and, of course, dock this thing, and... You know, standard docking. I dock it to the port right there. You know, using a bit of the translation, of course. And and then I come in, and I come in slowly, and I disable the RCS and SAS before I dock so this thing doesn't wobble to hell. And then I quickly transfer the fuel and, uh, you know, transfer the RCS into the RCS tank. And then I undock the thing because it is done with its mission and I go ahead and deorbit it. And uh, you're actually going to see this burn up in the atmosphere, which is going to be pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, the, the only remaining stuff on there is the uh, is the RCS. And I, I set in the atmosphere, and of course I go disable the UI. And I send this thing into a spin, thinking that, hey, if I send it into a spin, you know, maybe more parts will blow up. Uh, that really doesn't occur. This is all it, uh, I eventually start physics warping because I kind of lost my patience with this, but, uh, uh, as you can see, the atmosphere forces start to take hold. Um, I don't know when exactly it is, but I, I switched to chase cam. There's a bit of an epilepsy warning coming up, so, uh, if you have epilepsy, uh, look away for the next minute, minute and a half. So yeah, here it is, starting to go back in the atmosphere, will die a, a fiery death. You know, there's a, there's the bit of the, uh, chase cam a little bit, and there's the epilepsy warning. So, uh, <laughs> this thing obviously starts to go down. Uh, we're coming back down on the, of course, the Kerbal Space, the continent where the Kerbal Space Center is on, and then stuff starts blowing up, mainly the engine, and I think of some of the RCS ports. And, uh... Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, it, it blows up. Uh, 
And uh, anyways, uh, we are done with the trust segment for Columbia Station, and I am done with the video. So uh, thank you all for watching. Please, uh, if you're on YouTube and bitch you, please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, I stream on YouTube and Twitch fairly regularly. I'm working on getting that back up. And uh, join the Discord server if you want to. And uh, I guess uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one the next ksp video which is actually going to be really special something that i've been working on that i want to show you all so uh goodbye